Mr. T here uh, with a tutorial on solving nonlinear systems of equations. This is part of our conics unit. Uh, we have a system of equations here uh, that we're going to first graph just to get an idea of what this looks like, but ultimately we want to be able to solve it algebraically. Our first equation here, you should recognize this shape, is a, an ellipse because we have two variables squared they're both the same sign, but we have different numbers. Uh, to sketch a graph of that, we could put this into standard form by dividing both sides of the equation by 12. So we're going to get here x squared over 2 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. So I divided all three terms here by 12 and simplified my fractions. So we can see here that this is a vertical ellipse with A being 2. So our vertices would be here. And if we go down 2 here. And our B value to the co-vertices is square root of 2, which is about 1.4. So we can put a covertice here, and we go 1.4 here. And we can sketch our ellipse. Our second equation is a linear equation. We can put it into slope-intercept form by solving for y and we see that we have a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of negative 1 so we would be going down 1 over 1 and we could draw a line through here now it would look like and we're pretty confident here that one of our solutions is uh, at the point zero two. And it almost looks like there's a point here at 1, 1, but uh, I think that's a mistake due to my ellipse not being properly drawn. So we'll see what we get when we solve it algebraically. The solution to a system of equations is where the two graphs intersect. So we are looking for the coordinates of this intersection and our intersection over here. So let's uh, get into this. Now we learned several ways of solving systems of equations back earlier in the year when we worked with linear equations. One of the methods was the substitution method. We've also used this recently in our exponential modeling unit. So if I solve our second equation here for y, I get y equals negative x plus 2. So we can solve this or substitute this value for y into the original first equation. So if we get that, we've got 6x squared plus 3, and now I'm going to replace the y with negative x plus 2 squared equals 12. We need to expand this out so we can turn it into a quadratic equation, so we need to use FOIL to expand our uh, binomial that's squared, and we're going to get negative x squared, which was x squared. Now we have 2 times negative x, and we're going to have another negative 2 times x if we put this into a foil. And then our last, which would be 2 times 2, is 4. We'll combine the like terms here and get negative 4x and distribute our 3, and we have. That was negative 4x, and then times 3 is negative 12x. 3 times 4 is plus 12. We'll combine like terms here, and since we have a quadratic, whoops, that's equal to 0. Not 0, but equal to 12. Since this is a quadratic equation, we want to set it equal to 0, so we're going to subtract 12. So we get here 9x squared minus 12x, and here we subtract 12, so that equals 0. Uh, we can GCF factor here. We can factor out a 3x, so we'll solve by factoring. 
and we have 3x minus 4 equals 0. Let's scroll down a little bit. And if we solve this using the zero product property, we get 3x equals 0 or x equals 0. And here we get 3x minus 4 equals 0 or x equals negative 4 thirds. Now these are the x coordinates of our two intersection points. We can substitute into this equation to calculate y. So if I put 0 in here, I'm going to get y equals 2. So one of my intersection points is the point 0, 2. And if we put this in here, we get y equals negative, negative 4 thirds. I'm sorry, this was positive here. So positive 4 thirds plus 2. So that's negative 4 thirds plus 6 thirds or 2 thirds for our y value. So we have the point here. 4 thirds, 2 thirds. So that point properly would have been about here, which kind of looks right. So again, this was, and uh, those two points are solution. So this is solving a nonlinear equation, and we use the substitution technique. Now, this will work particularly, use, uh, particularly well when one of our equations is a linear function. Uh, I hope this helps. Talk to you later.